New Monster Hunter shown! Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! Finally! No Elden Ring DLC trailer, sad face, but hey, Monster Hunter 6, aka Monster Hunter Wild, officially confirmed. And it looks beautiful and may be the biggest change up to Monster Hunter we have ever gotten. But it releases in 2025. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. So yeah, a long ways off, but if it means the game gets the work needed to make it shine, I'd say let it cook. But today I'm gonna do a little deep dive to appreciate this new game a little bit more beyond giggling like a little schoolgirl from excitement and raise some questions that are yet to be answered. Like, is the game open world? Well, we don't know yet. However, by the title, Wild, which insinuates wilderness, like bone to be wild, and given the size of the location shown, we can assume it's probably going to be open world, or at the least, the biggest maps we have ever gotten in a Monster Hunter title. So, let's begin. The trailer opens up with this scene here. I don't know what these mons are called, we're just going to call them armadillos. But immediately, what is the big takeaway from this shot? Density. Pack density. This whole trailer has more monsters in an area than any other previous game ever. Big packs, which is really cool. It means A, a lot of materials, hell yeah, and B, there could be a horde of giant large monsters waiting in the wild to eat you. Yeah, you're confident beating a Devil Joe by itself, but imagine two Savage Devil Joes appear out of nowhere, like the connoisseurs from the Dinosaur movie, while you have just Rarity 4 gear. You're gonna get the hell out of there. That's the beauty of open world. You can probably encounter late game stuff if you wanted to. Like in Elden Ring. You know, who didn't go to the Kaled region and get eaten by the giant dogs and birds, right? That same thing can happen here. Now, there also seems to be gender differences between male and female monsters. Example, there's these armadillos, but then there's a spiky boy with a big old spike, likely the alpha of the group. And while it's hard to see, there's also another small monster here, sort of a Kestodon type monster, I guess, with a crested head. The last takeaway from this scene before moving on is this pillar, or spike, or whatever it's called. These are littered throughout the whole entire trailer all the way to the end. Clearly, they're important in this area. And the next shot teases some kind of storm approaching. I am the storm that is up. Okay. Then, this is where we see our hunter for the first time, and it's Ride. That's right, Capcom loved the dogs and Ride so much, we got a Ride off the bat. And instead of a man's best friend, we get a dinosaur raptor thing. Really cool, and it makes sense. If this game is going to be open world, then this makes getting around places much quicker. The details on the scales and feathers are fantastic. The run speed of the monster also seems perfect, if it doesn't get faster than this. The dogs and rise were a bit too fast in my opinion, when it sprinted anyways, but when this tries to sprint, it lowers its front legs to help maneuver. Kinda reminds me of Toothless from the How to Train Your Dragon movie, but very cute, very cool. We have a dinosaur chocobo. Oh, also it can fly. Or maybe glide, I guess. Speaking of greatsword, yeah, the hunter has a greatsword. Assuming an early game greatsword, not bad. Looks better than world starting greatswords, lol. <laughs> Moving on to perhaps my favorite scene is this. It changes to the hunter being chased by six big fur monsters, yay more mammals, instead of wyverns all the time. But they kind of look like Goss Harag, but I'm not sure if they're using the same skeleton. But this chase scene highlights the frantic scene the trailer is conveying, as well as highlighting pack size again. Like, look at all those armadillos. I mean, dillos. There's gotta be like 20 of them, and the hunter is weaving through in and out of them. This scene is so cool to me, because again, we've never had something like this in Monster Hunter. It's moments like this that are probably gonna stick with your memory of the game, apart from the thousands of hours of just slaying the same 10 monsters in Endgame. Also, it is not a guided cutscene, this is in-game gameplay. It is you, playing how you want. This is all in-game footage, no Grand Theft Auto 6 dolled up cutscene junk. It is game play. And if graphic guys want to slow it down, you can really tell on some textures that you can see. But here is where you can see those Sasquatches in better detail as well. They have huge mouths, dude. I didn't notice that at first, but yeah, they look terrifying. Now, if these are official large monsters, while generic, they do look scary. They even bite and yeet armadillos like nothing, so really cool interaction between monsters and imagine if your ride can get disabled from getting hit and then you're stuck on foot fighting four grizzly monsters i mean you're done you're done though you're dead <laughs> but the trailer proceeds and a storm approaches and covers the player and ruins your visibility 
However, I didn't notice at first, but even more small monsters show up with a three crested head. Could this be the small version of the new raptor monster in Wilds? Possibly, but there's a lot of them and everyone's running, just like the wild. In real life, a natural disaster occurs, everyone is screwed and running for their life. So this is so cool. And yeah, the next scene shows lightning as an additional element, which strikes down and even can strike the armadillos with the spikes and make their back low, or it can strike those pillars we talked about. Also, look at the particle effects, dude. Looks so good. So there might be some mechanic where if there is a lightning storm, you kind of want to run near these pillars so they act like lightning rods to absorb the hit. And you know, with cold and hot drinks being abandoned in the Monster Hunter series recently, to finally get some map hazards that can hurt you and not just the monsters all the time is welcome. But this scene opens up a huge discovery. Before that though, one last thing for the fur monsters is their tails. Tail movement in this game, or at least their tails, are much more flexible, almost like a whip in motion, which could lead to a huge animation upgrade for monsters in whatever engine this is running in. Also, gender difference is right. Here is a fur monster with a stub tail versus the ones with the long rat-like tails. So again, if they are large monsters, we can possibly see a visual difference between genders of all monsters, just like real life animals. Okay, now to the discovery. It's this. This looks like a rifle stock, AKA LBG or HPG. So is it possible that with an open world game, we can now carry and swap between two weapons? In this case, a great sword and let's just say LBG. That makes sense, right? If there's no main hub we can go back to constantly or like a camp spot we can use to access all of our 200 crafted weapons, it makes sense that we can be able to carry at least two weapons, right? So very interesting if that's the case, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. And the final shots show the chocobo dodging the lightning and then going into flying mode. Again, great details on it. And just imagine all the armor sets we're gonna be able to craft for it or just in general, the early game customization of the feather colors and patterns. Come on, Elden Ring DLC, we need horse customization. But anyways, yeah, it lands and some weird dust flows over the land and makes grass grow. And we get our final shot of a crescent shaped mountain, potentially a laser being fired at it and making that hole because that doesn't look natural. But we get a huge fast shot of the area. And again, those lightning poles all over the place. Now, I don't know what the dust thing implies. Is it a normal environment over time that regrows? Is it us that help grow the land by planting stuff and then regrowing the earth after an apocalyptic moment? Like say a meteorite or a giant monster? I don't know, sky's the limit what this means, but it's exciting nonetheless. Also, yeah, hey, there's Rathalos thrown in to show that, hey, this is Monster Hunter. We still have old monsters still. So yeah, Rathalos is back, yippee. <laughs> now the logo for Wilds is also six dragon heads with five rings, meaning this is Monster Hunter 6. If you didn't know, most if not all image titles had dragon heads representing the number of the flagship game on the logo, and we're now on 6. World was 5. So this is the next step, the future of Monster Hunter. But given the possibility of open world and the epic scale of things so far, could we fight giant monsters on foot like Laviante from Frontier? Will Frontier monsters return? They said they were open to the idea after Sunbreak Spiky Boy, so we'll see. One last stinger for the logo is below wilds is a reflection indicating water or water reflection perhaps. So could underwater combat return even though it wasn't shown? Or maybe it's just the general theme of a water serpent bringing rains to this desolate desert land. We'll have to find out in 2025. But if this is truly open world to the likes of something like Elden Ring, I don't know, I'm excited. Capcom is always changing and pushing boundaries with this series and while sure people didn't like changes the world had from the normal style, in the end, whatever they did worked since it practically doubled the fan base. So if we have a true open world monster hunter game where you can roam anywhere you want, encounter crazy RNG moments of finding a rare monster or running for your life from a group of monsters, crafting tons of stuff, gathering tons of stuff, uh, I don't know, it's gonna be different but it's gonna be an experience nonetheless. And I'm sure fighting is still gonna be top tier because I mean, it's still Capcom. With that said, many questions remain. Are Palicos in? We saw none. Is there a new weapon type? We desperately need a 15 weapon after all these years. How are quests handled? How is multiplayer handled? Is it still four players or can we encounter people along the way like an MMO? And is progress shared? Is story progression shared? It'll be interesting how everything will be reworked because I think there's gonna be a lot of stuff that's gonna change. 
which is scary and exciting. So let me know your thoughts on the trailer and leave a like if you enjoyed today's discussion. 2025, long time from now, also next gen only, so no PS4 or Switch. But yeah, it's probably gonna be months before we get any new information. Uh, Ryozo did say around summer in 2024, we are gonna see or hear more about the game. Until then, we have Rise of the Ronin, Dragon's Dogma 2, Wukong releases in August 2024, so a ton of stuff in 2024 to keep us busy, but man, I'm itching for more Monster Hunter, especially next gen Monster Hunter. Next gen Monster Hunter? Let's go! That's it for me though, I'll keep you guys updated on anything major that comes up, leave a like and comment down below your thoughts of the trailer. Bye!